All righty, and good evening. So today, uh, this Wednesday, the Messiah Mansion Mission Week crew is going to be presenting tonight. And so we had a very eventful week, and right now we're going to have a prayer. So if y'all can kneel with me. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we are able to gather here to worship tonight. Please help us all to have a wonderful evening together. And please help us all to be able to learn something new from what we share tonight. In your name, amen. We got there. Was it storming, I think? No? No. No. Okay. Uh, Something happened, and so the electricity was out. So that was very interesting. Um, We got there. There was no storm, so we closed it off. (laughs) Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. I'm, I'm... no, we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. So um, we had left that morning, we left that Tuesday morning. Sorry, I'm walking around everywhere. So um, we had left that morning, I believe it was Tuesday, and then that night, I'm going to skip forward, and then I'm going to go back to set up. So um, we got to the houses, we dropped the girls off with all their stuff, and then they realized that there was no power, and we didn't really have flashlights. I mean, we did, but, you know, you can't charge your phone, so the flashlights are going to, yeah. So... Um, that was very interesting. So some of the guys went into the garage, and we were, you know, flipping around the breakers, you know, trying to see what the deal was. <laughs> and I get, so I was in there, and I thought I'd flipped it back. And then I, we just left, and <laughs> pretty much, when the power came back on, the girls didn't have power. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I left the girls without power. Anyway, um, so the guys had power, though, so it was okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, um, the flooded church. Now, that was, I believe that might have been the second night. That was the first night. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. It's, I've slept since then. What? I, yeah. So, um, the church flooded. So, it was raining. We were doing worship, and then we kind of noticed, you know, coming out the bottom of the wall, there was just like a puddle. And it was growing pretty quick. So, um, we didn't know what to do. We're new here. Um, where's the pastor? Where's da 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 We didn't, I, I think we called someone got out there, and I forget who did what about it, but we ended up leaving them with the flood. <laughs> so um, now the beginning to set up the sanctuary. So we got there, and that's pretty much the first thing we did. We, we got out, and um, we got out the cables and everything. Most of us haven't set up the sanctuary before, so it was kind of a learning experience. You know, tug on the cables, da-da-da, get it squared. We don't know how to square things. We figured that out, but um, <laughs> we made it. Um, we got some stakes in, um, and we started getting the foundation in. Yes, okay, so you guys really can't see. Point is, there's a bunch of stakes, and there's cables that are running everywhere. This is kind of marking where everything's going to be, where the structure's going to be, where the tarps are, everything, et cetera, et cetera. And that was the beginning. Oh, am I talking about this, too? No? Well, we're done with that. Am I talking about that? Okay, so um, here we have the structure. I was on top of the structure, probably almost died a few times. Um, Ethan was on the other side. You can't see him, but this is when we were rolling the tarp on top of it, the multicolored one, and there's nothing to stand on. So all you have is the ribs, and then you're, you're, you're like sitting on top of this eight-inch wide thing. You could fall up either direction. Not fun, if you think about it. Yeah, so, um, oh, hello. Okay, sorry. <coughs> yeah, okay, anyway, um, so that was fun. Ethan and I kept um, rolling each other over with the tarp. Um, so that was a learning experience, and okay, is that it? Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, okay so uh, the first night that we were there, we had the rainstorm and everything, and uh, we got a call. The waiting tent was collapsing. Too much water was on the roof. So us guys had to go and fix it. We had to duct tape up one of the poles, and during that time, I was just blabbing away, away, away. And I had this bright idea. What if I just duct taped my mouth shut? So I took that duct tape roll and I wrapped it around my head. Very painful experience. But <laughs> the next day, the next day we had to work in a ton of muddy grass. And so we were setting up all the poles and stakes. And uh, I did not like my picture being taken. I told them, do not put that picture up there. But they did not listen. But anyway, yeah, it was all crazy. Oh, I'm talking again. Okay, so this was... This was really nice. Uh, setup actually went pretty quickly because, well, first of all, um, Corey was there. He helped out quite a bit. And then um, we had a lot of volunteers. In the church, it was a decent size, but we had a, a lot of volunteers. So it went up pretty quick, and, you know, many hands make light work. So it was like, um, you know, people were pounding stakes. And I, I personally was used to, you know, pounding, like, 
15, 10 steaks and I had to pound in like three. Because, you know, you have these other guys that are like, they have all this energy, you know, they want to show everyone they can pound the steaks. And so I was like standing there, I was like, you know what, you can do that. <laughs> so um, that made our lives pretty easy with the tents. The tents were up all together probably in, what, an hour and a half? An hour and a half. It typically took me about three hours. So, okay, there was this guy. This guy, oh, wow. Okay, talk about muscle. Anyway, so he, I sw- didn't he, ha- did he have a sledgehammer in each hand? Yep. Yeah, he had a sledgehammer in each hand, and he was, Jackson. Mm-hmm. yeah, okay, that, that's his name, I guess. Big, we call him Big Will. He was a really cool dude. Um, Samoan dude, and um, he, really, he really was a big help. He actually put up the, um, the sign in front of the sanctuary, which is um, not in, in front of the church, which was really cool, um, way more grand than anything we had had before. Um, maybe they'll show that, probably not. Anyway, um, so the volunteers were really a blessing. That it wasn't just, you know, 12 of us that had to do it by ourselves. So, so we keep on continuing set up, and uh, we were setting up the pillars and the curtains on the second day. And so I was pounding in stakes. Pretty much everybody was pounding up stakes, and then we started putting up the pillars. And for those who have been on Messiah Mansion trips, Pillars are just a pain because you got to hold them in place. You, somebody's got to be at the top on the capital, and then you got to put the pole, make it down, stake it. Yeah, real pain. And this whole time, Corey's dog was just sitting under the f- uh, courtyard tent, just watching everybody just go around. And yeah, everybody just loved her. And then, uh, yeah. So here we have Susie just standing around. <laughs> Then she's pounding in steaks while Andre is putting up pillars, and Micah looks like he's ready to dump some water on someone, which (laughs) fortunately he did not do. But anyway, so we had a lot to set up, and but fortunately we got everything set up. So, yeah, we continued setting up, and when we got, well, after Ethan and... Lincoln, after Ethan and Lincoln put up the tarps on top, the the brown and the multicolored one, we started putting up the flaps and to let me go up there, which was really fun. <laughs> and yeah, what what else did we did do? Um, yeah, tying the ropes down, or I'm not sure what. Oh, putting up the tent flap. Up, I think there. Yeah, and then bounding in stakes, measuring the thing. Um, w- why are we going backwards? Yeah, and Micah was laying down the foundation. Oh, sorry. It. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, it's too tiny. Um. Oh. <laughs> okay, so. Micah laid down the foundation, and Jonathan did the, and others found it in stakes, and I think that's Angela there, yep. doing something, I don't know what. Oh, rolling it up? Okay. Okay. So, during the trip, they basically asked me to translate the tour into Spanish. <laughs> yeah. So that's basically what I did the whole time is and give a few tours, which, yeah, really well. The people were really interested and then said they would study more at the end. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so this is um, me giving my tour, so... Um, Angela made me work really hard over my entire tour, but other than that, I had a lot of fun. Um, it was nice because one day there's this guy here, he came on Sabbath, he was c- carrying like four ram's horns and wearing this coat with tassels, tassels on it. So I'm like, oh, he's a Jew. And my, my grandma's a messianic Jew, so I kind of knew a little bit about Jews. So I was able to have a really great talk with him, and I was able to talk with him about stuff because I kind of knew where he was coming from. And then he was, he actually, the pastor was having some meetings that entire week about um, Jewish, Jewish feasts and, Christi- and how they point to Christ. 
And so he was able to come for all of those. So that was really nice. And I had one other really good tour also that it was like 30 people. I don't know. It was extra big. It was like this Baptist church, and they were really into it, and that was a blessing. So, yes, during the week we were giving a lot of tours, and we didn't have a lot of full tour guides because most of them hadn't ever been on a sanctuary trip yet. So us full tour guides were supposed to be doing a bunch of, like, mentoring and helping them learn their tours and stuff. So they would go out with us in our tours, and every once in a while we would drag them into being our sinner for the lamb offering thingy, and they always thought that was not the most exciting thing ever, but... Um, <coughs> Several tours that I had during that week were really, really good. One of them, um, a family came through, and actually, it was the very last tour of the exhibit. This family came through, and it was a husband and a wife and their teenage son. And the husband and the wife came in, and they looked super interested, and they were listening. I could tell that they were interested. They were asking questions. But the son, I wasn't so sure. Like, he looked like he was sort of listening, but just to be polite. Um, but by the time we got to the holy place and I started talking about, like, um, the parallels in the holy place, he, like, I saw him, like, start paying attention, and he wanted to take pictures, and then we got to the most holy place, and he started asking questions, so I was getting, like, really excited, because I'm like, finally, this guy's excited about this. So when we got into the, uh, last tent, the high priest tent, he was asking me so many questions, I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna go over time in here, um, but it was really exciting to see somebody go from, like, totally uninterested and just sitting there to be polite to asking tons of questions and being super excited about what they were hearing. And I thought that was really cool. So I gave several tours during the week. Um, there's one tour that I want to talk about that I had. I forgot when it was. I want to say Thursday. Um, and I think... Andre did the first station of this tour, but so I, over the summer, I became a full tour guide. I was giving tours, whenever I do a kids tour with like small kids in it, like under the age of 10 or something, it never goes well. <laughs> so uh, I had a tour, that tour, and there was a few kids in it. There was enough adults, I was like, okay, I'll just give an adult tour. They probably won't pay attention. And so I was just going through the, like um, giving the tour, um, and in the courtyard, I had finished up. I usually ask at the end of stations if someone has a question. So I asked if anyone had a question, and she raised her hand and started and asked a question. And it was actually, like, a question that showed that she had been thinking. And I found that quite interesting. So we moved on to the holy place. The same thing happened again. Now, here's the amazing part. In the most holy place, um, here's where it got interesting. I could tell she was really paying attention. And I was talking a little bit about how we repent from our sins and whatnot in the application section of that. And she, at the end of the station, um, I asked if anyone had questions. She asked, how do I repent? And that stuck out to me because, as is obvious, <laughs> I'm not good at do kids' tours. But she was paying attention and listening to that tour. Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and God were really working through that tour. All right, so like I said before, I've never been on a trip, actual trip with Messiah's Mansion before, so this is um, a first time for me. Now, before the trip happened, Mrs. Liney Weber came to me and gave me this stack of papers. Now, I don't know about you, but this is a little intimidating. Like, we've got like four stapled stacks of information here, and I took one look at this, and my heart is like, I was dying inside. I was like, there's no way I'm going to memorize all of this information. How am I supposed to memorize this and present it to people in a way that they're going to understand this and even learn anything from it? Like, this is an important message. This is the message of salvation through the sanctuary, right? So I started freaking out. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm, not just, I'm just going to not think about it. So I didn't even look at it. Um, <laughs> so we get to the place where we're going to be doing tours. And I don't remember who. I think it was actually Mr. Anthony. He's like, so for those of you who don't know, you should probably start looking over your notes. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> so I went back. I started looking over the notes, and I was so confused. Um, thank you to Annalisa 
and Mr. Larry will talk about that a little bit later. But Annalisa, she helped me with learning the basics of it for the first night, um, which helped me get over that first hump. Um, but I'm kind of, can I combine this? Okay, so <laughs> this picture, uh, this mission week would have gone way worse if it wasn't for Mr. Larry helping me. He committed so much time. Every afternoon after lunch, he'd be like, okay, after you finish eating, we're going to go into the back room. We're going to study, okay? We're going to learn this station, and, and then you're going to give it to me, and then we're going to move on to the next one. And I was like, ah! <laughs> But, you know, at first, I didn't have any interest at all to learn the tour. I'm like, there's no way. This is boring, you know? Like, what's the point? But the way he helped me understand it and how he showed it to me, it made it so much cooler because most of these pictures here are in the courtyard. Personally, my favorite – can't talk. My favorite uh, station <laughs> is the courtyard. That might seem a little weird because most people like the holy or most holy place, but I like the courtyard because it's so simple and easy to understand. It's practical ways to understand how, how we see Jesus in the courtyard. I'm about to start giving my tour here. Um, <laughs> easy ways to see Jesus, his life all through the courtyard and how we can understand him and basically the plan of salvation. And it's amazing. Um, but yeah, thanks to Mr. Larry. I was able to, as you can see, there's highlight, highlighted stuff everywhere. I got through these papers. I made a bunch of flashcards. <laughs> um, we really, really worked at it, but if it wasn't for him, I'd probably still be just sitting there like a bump on a log. <laughs> so big thanks to both Annalisa and Mr. Larry. <laughs> okay, so um, before we get started with why I'm waving my arms in the air. Um, so, um, so I believe they told us kind of to brush up on our tours before we came. And I didn't really listen to that. I thought I'd be fine. And my tours were a little rusty. The first one was. But then finally things kind of smoothed out. So, you know, um, even the full tour guides kind of needed to brush up a little bit. So we had some review to do as well. So um, now I, I was trying to help mentor. That's not really something I'd done before. But um, I was trying to help people learn the tours. And then I was also helping give tours since day one. So on the first day, it was on Sabbath. Now, this was my second tour, I believe, of the day. Um, so the first tour was like, I don't want to say it was a flop, but mm, I, I was really rusty. So the second tour was really, really cool. I got a decent sized group. I prefer big groups um, because I feel like it's easier to connect because if you can kind of break the tension and um, with like one person, it'll break the tension with other people. And then, you know, you got the whole group engaged and they're kind of, you know, glad to be there. They don't feel like it's awkward. So I, I enjoy being able to connect with a large group because here's the thing is that if it's a small group, it's kind of hit or miss. Um, you have some you connect with, you have some that you don't um, with a big group. So I had a big group for my second tour. And in the overview tent, I was kind of assessing. Um, that's kind of where I assess my group. You're like, okay, um, should I be asking questions? Should I just talk or oh, what's, what's going to go on. So I took them into the courtyard. I kind of had a feel for the group. I actually really liked this group because I was getting a lot of um, interaction with them and they were talking to me. I was talking to them. It was really cool. And we moved into the holy place. I outlined the importance of, um, oh, what's it called? You know, our relationship with God. And, you know, they were nodding. And, you know, it's kind of a feeling of satisfactory when, you know, or you're just standing there and, you know, they're nodding. And they're acknowledging what you're saying. They're not just, because that, that's kind of like, that makes your heart sink. They're like, I'm saying something, and they're not taking it in. But it's really nice whenever they are taking it in. And so I kind of noticed that throughout the courtyard, well, throughout the whole tour, but I started noticing that in the courtyard and then the holy place and the most holy place. Now, the thing about the most holy place, I was getting really excited. I was moving around a lot. So we have the Ark of the Covenant inside in, 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 well, in the most holy place, that's where it is. But I was like moving around, like walking around, and there were stakes. <laughs> I actually tripped over a stake onto the ground, and then I just hear the whole crowd go, ooh. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I have to get up. And I got up, and I kept giving the tour like nothing happened. And the funny thing was, there was this lady in the tour. She brought a friend. She came back, which really was really cool. She brought a friend back. And I talked to her because, you know, we're supposed to talk to the people before, you know, they go into their tour. It's called salting and, you know, be the salt of the earth. So um, I was talking to this lady, and she had come through my tour before, and she brought a friend, and then she was talking about how I fell. And she was like, we didn't know if you were okay or not. I was like, I was good. I was good. I just had to get up and keep talking. But I was really blessed by that tour. 
That was probably my favorite tour of the whole, whole exhibit. And from these pictures, I learned that I do talk with my hands quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I, I think that's it. I forgot to say something. <laughs> so um, the last tour that I did on the trip was my favorite tour. Um, so generally, each station, you have a thick pack of papers to learn, right? So each station generally took me like one to two days. And then we get to the holy place, and I'm just floundering. Like, I could not, I was stuck on it for at least, what, like three or four days. This poor man <laughs> went through so much. <laughs> um, but I just, I could not get it. I was trying and trying. I would stay in, in the kindergarten room and just talk to myself for hours. You know, and then I'd get to the middle of the tour, and I'd be like, ah, I can't do this. <laughs> and I'd just plop on the chair. I eventually got it. Um, the last tour I did, I was a actually able to do the holy place tour. Um, Personally, I think I did really bad. Other people don't agree with me. But <laughs> anyways, <laughs> the last tour I had, the people were amazing. Because like Lincoln was saying, there's sometimes people that just sit there and stare at you like you're a statue. And you're like, hello, these are not rhetorical questions. You can answer me, you know? Um, <laughs> but sometimes, you know, they're just going to sit there. Like, you can't, you don't really know what kind of group they're going to be. But this group was amazing. Like, everything I said, amen. Or <laughs> they would always answer my questions. They gave me feedback, which makes it really easy for the tour guide. Um, but that was a huge blessing. So if you ever get a chance to do Messiah's Mansion, do it. Because it's amazing. Like, the courtyard, I got so excited one time. I was, like, talking. I don't remember what I was talking about. But I, start, I was, like, jumping up and down. <laughs> I was like, and this is the labor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, unfortunately, they couldn't find any pictures of me doing the tour. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I had some really... Yeah, but I had some really interesting tours. Like, uh, one tour, there's this Mexican family in there, and they had three little boys, and so all three of them just sat up front. So I was talking in the overview tent, and I was talking about Solomon's Temple, and all through this tour, the little boys were like, oh, wow, oh, cool. They were just like, they were giving me, like, Lots of small feedback, and so then when I said, like, the people brought the idols into the temple, one of them's like, no, they couldn't have, like, I was like, wow, this kid, I, I want, he should be the tour guide, not me, but uh, for the first few days, I was learning the tour, and each time I would tell myself, it's not going to turn out good, it's not going to turn out good, and then Mr. Anthony passed me, and the first tour I gave was with Annalisa, and I did the overview. When I went back inside, Mr. Anthony asked me, how did it go? I said, it went terrible. <laughs> Annalisa came inside. How did it go with him? He was good. <laughs> and I was telling him, no, it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. But I was secretly telling myself, yeah, it was really good. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> and then uh, the second Sabbath there, all during church, I was going like this. Are they here yet? Are they here yet? Okay, it's almost time. It's almost time. Because, because we had, Angela and I had some very special guests coming. Our biological mom and our stepdad and our little sister was going to be coming. So all during church, I was just looking at my watch. Okay, this much time. Okay, this much time. And Angela, she would turn around. Stop fidgeting. Stop fidgeting. Stop fidgeting. <laughs> I just had to keep on doing this. And so then uh, they came a bit late, but they did finally come. And Angela was in a tour, and she, I had been the overview guide, and so I had gone back inside, and I was just sitting in there just waiting. And one of the volunteers who was helping us with the uh, uh, check-in, she comes in, and she's like, Angela Day, is Angela Day here? I'm like, I know what this is about. <laughs> no, but I'm here. <laughs> so, I'm so I walk out there, and we went inside, and we started talking. And I was thinking, maybe I should trick Angela into thinking that I'm just doing salt, our term for talking with the person before the tour. But, of course, I couldn't. She walks in, and I'm like, hey, Angela. <laughs> so we had a really nice time together. And then the next day, they came back, and they went through the tour. And our stepdad actually knew a lot about the tour. So he was like, all through the tour, he was like, mm-hmm, yep, that's true, yep, I agree with that. Like, he was just doing this through the whole tour. And, yeah, I had a really good experience. 
when Angela was doing the holy play, she told me to go tell Mr. Anthony that something was breaking and that I should get some of the guys to help me fix it. And so I missed that. But for the last time, I was able to be there. But I just, I just had to fidget around. Okay, so as you can see all over the screen, there's pictures of me. This is me doing a tour. <coughs> as you have uh, seen already, uh, how the tour overall went, I'll just uh, recap slightly, but then I'd like to tell you about an experience that I had actually on the tour. So uh, you give tours, you see how amazing it is, how uh, people get affected by the message. And <coughs> some people, it, well, most people, whether or not they recognize it, it does end up affecting them for the better. Sorry, I have lots of notes. Uh, on, on one tour, uh, somebody that was in my tour, he had come years earlier, and he had gone through a tour of a tour guide I'd never met. But um, he, he had a Bible that the tour guide had given him. And at the end, he came out, and he was showing me. And it was just amazing to see uh, the result of what had happened however many years earlier when he had come through the tour, and then how he was back again, and how it had just touched his life so much. It was just amazing. And then uh, we, on the last day, we had a little bit of excitement. As you can see, if you can read really fine print at the bottom, what does it say? It says, the sanctuary almost blew away. Doesn't that sound like fun? Well, it just so happened that at the moment that all the wind came and the sanctuary was about to blow away, I was sitting in the waiting area doing absolutely nothing. So it suddenly became my job to make sure the sanctuary didn't blow away. So about every 15 minutes, I would run out and I would go through all three tents, the sanctuary, and the structure, and make sure every rope was tight. And by the time I got back, I had about a three minute wait and I'd go out and do the whole thing again. For like, maybe mm, till the end of the day, so like an hour and a half, or maybe it was two hours. But um, it, it, it was kind of interesting. Um, I got some help from people named Ethan and Andre and Susie. They helped me keep it from blowing away. And yeah, overall, it was just an amazing success. And I feel like part of the reason it didn't blow away was angel power. Uh, Ethan wants to say something. One quick funny story about that. So I was doing a tour with Susie, and we were in the courtyard. There's a canopy in the courtyard that we used to cover the chairs and provide a little bit of shade. But obviously, with the wind, it was starting to blow away a little bit. So one of the stakes came out of the ground. Like, the wind just pulled it out of the ground. And so Mr. Larry was there, too. He knows about this. But So he went over. He held the pole. He was like, go get a sledgehammer. So I went and got the sledgehammer. He's like, just pound it in. I was like, during the middle of the tour? He's like, yeah. So I literally knelt there. And while she was giving the tour, I sat there pounding in the stake. Another quick funny story about pounding in the stakes during tours. Um, I was in my holly place. I'm just giving my holly place, just like, I'm fine. And like three people just like run behind the group of people I'm giving the tour to, and they're just like pounding in stakes um, on the curtains. I was like, you couldn't have waited. But um, I, I, I'm kind of glad that they did do it because, you know, we might have had a bigger problem on our hands. But, but. <laughs> yeah, on that note, there was ropes that were loose enough that I could pull them about a good solid foot to the side, like just with barely any effort. So yeah, it was really loose and it was really in a bad spot. Now, as you can see, we were having a little bit of fun. Behind you, me, you see our blood monster. <laughs> now, this uh, is Micah. He thought that he would play a prank on us. Uh, <clears throat> I heard that uh, when uh, Micah showed himself to Pastor Larry, somehow I got blamed for it. <laughs> and apparently, things were not going to go well for me. But suddenly they realized that Micah had actually just had a meeting with a ketchup bottle. Yeah. And he had uh, had a little bit of fun and put ketchup all over. Yeah, it, it looked a lot better. It was, it was really funny. Okay, whatever. So about that, I'm coming out of a tour, and here's Micah coming down the walk. He's like, evil taskmaster, Benjamin hit me. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I stepped just a bit closer to him, and me being at home with two brothers, my nose works a little bit over time. So I, sm I smell this sweet, sickening tomato smell. And I just look at him, and I'm like, no. Go clean.
clean. Go clean it up. No. <laughs> well, when Micah told me this, uh, I was like, really? Wait, what's that? That's ketchup on your face. Like, he really had me fooled. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my turn. So this is me giving a tour, and looking back at these pictures, I look like my brother, <laughs> and I have some of the weirdest stances. <laughs> what? Okay. Um, so I never actually got past the courtyard, so I was only giving the tours for the overview in the courtyard, and... In doing that, I got to do salt a lot, which Jonathan told you it's when we just go out to talk to people before they go into their tours. And it really changed me because I don't like walking up to people and just talking to them. That's not how I work. <laughs> <laughs> but by the end of the tour, I was comfortably walking up to people and talking to them, so it was really nice. Now, on one of the days that I was giving the courtyard, um, <clears throat> It was really, really windy, and the sheep that was on there blew away like five times. <laughs> so I was constantly walking back and forth and back and forth, and that was really interesting. Yeah. Okay, next. Anyways, so um, like Susie, um, Mr. Larry was the one that helped me learn most of my tour. And when I first got there, I really didn't want to give tours. I was just there because, you know, I was supposed to be there. So I was there. <laughs> and um, so but I started learning the tour. And after a while, like Mr. Larry really, he showed me how important it was and how interesting it really was. And he really gave me the drive to want to learn the tour and to really want to become a full tour guide. So one day I was walking up from, I think I just finished giving a tour, and I said to the, I can't remember who was walking with me, but to someone I said, you know, if I'm able to become a full tour guide by the end of this um, exhibit, it'll be a miracle, because I really didn't have like any time left, and I had no clue how I'd be able to finish, but I really wanted to. And it turns out I was able to become a full tour guide, thanks to Mr. Larry. So that was a miracle. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say. So. <laughs> okay, so for those who do not know me or seen me around but do not know me, my name is Angela. I am the farm manager's daughter. Um, I graduated last year. I'm a full-time employee of Mazai's Mansion, and I had the privilege of enduring <laughs> being with him for about a week and a half. With um, I did. I had fun. It was great. Um, so being a full-time employee of Messiah's Mansion and being a full tour guide of Messiah's Mansion and with the tour is a wonderful experience. Um, uh, just to tell you a little about my tour, I, I tend to get excited. Very. <laughs> if we had the waiting tent outside and I'm in the holy place, you guys could still hear me. I'm loud. <laughs> And another thing for those who have been on a sanctuary trip with me and they're behind me, I don't stick to the time. <laughs> I, I, I don't like the clocks, so I, I make it a goal not to look at them. <laughs> yeah, the clocks are, they're supposed to be your friend, but in reality, they're not. They're your enemy. Time is your enemy when you're on a tour, especially when this tour these people are engaged in what you're saying. They are responding. They're, it just, you, as a tour guide, the past few years I've done this, I, I believe it's all true for every full tour guide. You feed off the reactions of the people. If they are stone-faced, we're told, pretend to paint a smile on their face. Half the time, I am very tempted to take the Sharpie out of my pocket and draw a face <laughs> on someone. 
that's how bad it gets because there's no emotion. They're not doing anything. And it's hard as a tour guide because you don't know what they're thinking. You, you, you're just, you just have to rely on the Holy Spirit because it's his tour. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's God's tour that I'm just the vessel. But um, for those who can see the screen, don't have bad, ad, ad, bad eyes like me, um, in the left bottom corner, the two people to the left and right of the page at the bottom, um, that is my little sister and my biological mom. We had the privilege of them coming, and I remember. So, like Jonathan said, we come out of, t he had to do the overview, then he went, he went to stay and wait for Jennifer and Wayne to come. They are our biological mom and stepdad. And I can tell you my tour. It's like, they might not be here by the time I get done. What's the point of rushing? Let me keep going with my tour as I have been instructed. And so I get out. I'm over time, like normal. <laughs> And so I come up. I'm not hurrying at all. It's like, they're here. They're here. Great. And I walk in, and my sister, Rebecca, she pops up. She's like, Sissy, you're here. Um, and as I'm listening to a couple of the people how she responded um, to Jonathan speaking, she, she really didn't know Jonathan was supposed to be there. She was excited that I was going to be there. She didn't know Jonathan was going to be there. That was a surprise. Jonathan was a surprise. She didn't give him as much as a reaction as he'd hoped, but <laughs> I wasn't there to see it, but hearing, hearing that they were asking for me instead of Jonathan, it's like they didn't tell her. Okay, good. But when... Um, when I finished the tour, Anthony, he pulled Jonathan and I out of the rotation so we could spend time, catch up with our family, and we almost had our baby brother come with us. Well, almost. She went into labor a couple days before they came down, but it was a false alarm. But, oh, my mind's going blank. I hate it when this happens. <laughs> when you're on a tour... And just knowing that you say something, but in the back of your mind, you're like, that's not my tour. What's happening? That's how I felt the entire time. Um, Sunday, Sunday afternoon, giving the first tour of Jonathan, um, we took Dwayne and Jennifer and Rebecca through the tour. And when <clears throat> sitting down Sabbath afternoon, um, Dwayne, he's been asking me, oh, do you guys have the altar sacrifice? Do you guys really have the Ark of the Covenant? It's like, is this life size? In the back of my mind, I'm like, wow, he knows what the sanctuary is. Now I'm excited. Now I'm ready for the tour I'm going to give him. But I wasn't because just knowing that, yeah, they're family. Yeah, they know I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. Yeah, they know I do this for a living. It's just having God take that tour and totally turn it around so it's not really for the family. It was for the other people in the tour. And the people that were in the tour with my family, they were getting excited. As I started getting excited, they were getting excited. My family, they were sitting on the front row taking pictures, <clears throat> happy to see me and all that. But it was just not as much emotion, not as much expression as the people behind them. And knowing that even though my message may have been pointed to my sister or may have been pointed to, because there was a couple kids in that too, I, I, I kind of watered it down, making sure the kids understood. But having God literally change that tour made it into a whole new um, experience. And it was, it was amazing. Now I can't, I can't describe it because I go on this tour trying to actively think of what I should say that wouldn't um, be, come across as I'm attacking my family because I know the religion and I, 
I want them in heaven, so I was like trying to push them to make a decision, but God told me, no, don't do that, don't do that. Let me be in control. So as I allowed God to take control, he, point, he turned my tour around for the other people in my tour, not my family. It was for the people in my tour, not my family. As my family heard it, whatever they do, they do. But the people, they were excited. They were getting the message. And I don't know, I, th I think about at least one of the, person, one, one of the people, they signed up for studies. I, I don't know. They were having prophecy seminars, and they were excited about that. But just knowing that God uses you no matter who's in your tour, no matter what you're saying, if you let him, he takes control. And being a tour guide at Messiah's Mansion, that's, that's the purpose, allowing God to take control of your life. So Mrs. Damar was planning to be here tonight, but she's not feeling well. So these are pictures of her taking the tour. She came along as one of the staff. Guys. Yep. And then Mr. Larry. Well, as uh, they have said, uh, Rebecca and Susanna, uh, they were uh, assigned to me for learning the tour. But let's back up a little bit farther. Back in the beginning of the summer, there was Annalise and Lincoln and Ethan were assigned to me. And uh, uh, Benjamin came in a little bit later. Uh, they, uh, uh, that was an interesting period of time. Even before Benjamin got there, it was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, he, he added a little bit of spice to the word interesting. Challenging, challenging. Uh, so it was, it, was, uh, it was fun working with them. Um, so in, in essence, they were starting to train me on how to train on this uh, mission trip uh, down there in Killeen, Texas. But uh, it was amazing to watch uh, both Rebecca and Susanna uh, not feel comfortable, and yet I would... Uh, I knew they were ready, and I would go ahead and have them step out and, uh, you know, in the courtyard, okay, you're ready, let's go do it. I'm right here if you have any questions or you falter or whatever. And uh, they never really did. They surprised themselves, didn't they? So it was, it, it was a lot of fun working with them. But also worked with some of the other students also. Um, you know, some of the students I just did encouraging with them. Some of them I would listen to part of their tour or something. Uh, Oriana, I, you, know, you know, she was off doing her Spanish thing. And so uh, never really spent much time with her. But uh, it was interesting. It was really interesting. It's a, it's a new... Uh, avenue. This summer has been a, a, a new avenue in uh, working with Messiah's Mansion to, to work that much with training. And uh, as you have heard, it can be a blessing to be a tour guide. And something that most of these students are having a hard time understanding is that those of us that have been around for a while and have been full tour guides for many years, they are teaching us new things. Haven't you all, most of you have argued with me over that. Okay? But they will come up with something that uh, we're like, where did you get that? And we may do some looking ourselves, but finally we end up going, you said such and such. Where did you get that? And then they open the Bible and they show us. It's like, okay, fine. You know, so just because we're older or been a tour guide for a few years or something doesn't mean that we're not learning. We're all to continue to learn. And, uh, you know, I was once not terribly that many years ago, I was told when you quit learning, you start to die. Now, me, I want to live forever. <laughs> 
So that means I've got a lot of learning to do yet, right? Okay. So we were going to have each of us talk about each of the stations, but since we're, we've already gone on for a while, I'll just tell you real quick for everyone that doesn't overview spelled wrong or something. But anyway, um, well maybe it's not. Anyway, <laughs> never mind. Um, so there are five stations for each of you. <laughs> there are five stations for anybody that doesn't know um, how the sanctuary tours work. Do you have something to say? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> I, was just saying, I was just saying we might as well just give the whole tour, but, you know, we won't keep you guys here forever. I don't think they want to stay here an hour and 15 minutes longer. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so the overview tent is basically where we talk about um, the different sanctuaries mentioned in the Bible. Then we have the courtyard, which talks about the courtyard around the tabernacle, the laver, the um, gate, the altar of sacrifice. Yeah, that's my favorite station, too. Um, then we have the holy place with um, the seven-branch candlestick, the altar of incense, and the table of showbread. <laughs> and yes, Mike is giving me a tour there. Um, then we have the most holy place with the altar um, ark of the covenant. And in the ark of the covenant, we have the Ten Commandments, the pot of manna, and Aaron's rod. Then the last station is the high priest tent. We have um, the high priest there and another Ark of the Covenant. At this exhibit, the um, one of the pastors at the church, he acted as a high priest on the time, and usually he was the one leading out in that tent. He'd talk about what the high priest did, his clothes, and yeah. So those are the five stations there, and now Andre... I'll tell about Fort Hood. Okay, so for one of the days, we visited Fort Hood, which is, I think, the largest fort in the world, or in America at least. And, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly, this is the third time I've been on a fort, considering my dad was from the Army. But... We never really lived near a fort. Anyway, we went there, and I got to see some of the helicopters that my dad worked on and flew. I got to see a Jolly Green Giant, which is a very, very large helicopter. It's a sky crane. We got to see a bunch of tanks, and we got to see a wagon with an engine on it. <laughs> that was interesting. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, we went to the base exchange and bought some things, and I lost the hat that I bought from there. <laughs> Sad face. When he says a wagon with an engine, he's not kidding. Like your garden wagon with an engine on the back and a steering wheel on the front. So most of us, when we went here, we weren't really expecting what we saw. Like, we were expecting to see, like, a bunch of military people marching around, all that type of stuff. Like, normally what you would think of. We go there, and we're like, this is no fort. This is a city, almost. Okay, so we did take down, so that was a lot of fun. We had all of these volunteers come. We probably got half the thing taken down in one night, and that was kind of funny because there was a tornado watch. Someone made the mistake of telling me that, and me being from Oregon, I'm not used to tornadoes, so I was freaking out because I thought something was going to drop out of the sky and take us away. <laughs> but anyway, that was exciting. And, oh, yes, Corey brought his four-wheeler to drive there, and so we're all like, oh, can we drive it? And he's like, oh, he looked at me, he's like, you can drive it. And then Jonathan's like, oh, I want to drive it. And he just gets, look, gets a scared look in his face. He's like, not you. And so <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, actually, I think Jonathan would have done a better job because he showed me where the foot brake is and the handbrake. Well, the foot brake was bad. So every time I'd be driving the thing, for half the time, I didn't know where the brakes were. <laughs> okay, so we got most of takeout. We got takeout. Okay, we got most of, <laughs> we got most of take take down done on the first night. So since this summer, I had been pushing for this idea for like forever, okay? It was probably like the second or third exhibit. Um, loading the truck is kind of what I do. I was pushing for the idea of the carpet wall. Now, um, you'll have to figure out what that is if you go, no, I'm kidding. All right, so um, pretty much the carpet wall is um, all of the furniture except for the 
all of the furniture in the holy and most holy place. Okay, all that furniture, including all the tents being taken down, everything from the tents being put inside the truck, the covering cherubs, the book carts. Point is, it's a very ambitious project. We were up until about 10, 10 that night. Okay, it was dark, but I was filled with so much energy. I could have taken, we could have taken it down that night. I wanted to, but they wouldn't let us. So um, we could have just slept in the next day and then left. <clears throat> but they didn't want to do that. So anyway, we got the carpet wall up, and I was super excited for that. Um, to really, uh, truly appreciate it, you guys need to go in the size mansion and see it because it's really a sight. Um, we got we got a lot done. It was dark. Um, we, we had a lot of volunteers. Big Will was there. <laughs> um, Corey was there. Michael was driving the four-wheeler around. That was an experience. <laughs> and... Um, we, we really had a lot of fun. And another thing I would like to say, not just about takedown, is something that really was a blessing to me is I got to see these guys learn the tour, and they learned it fast, okay? Um, it took me three exhibits to learn the tour, and there were several people that got the tour in one exhibit. And so it was really cool to me to see them, you know, giving tours. I wasn't giving any part of the tour until the second exhibit. So how fast they learned and how they were able to share that information with people was really a blessing for me. And I also like sharing that information with people because... You know, people, they'll walk in there, and I'm not trying to be rude, but they'll walk in there and point at the altar sacrifice and be like, is that, is that the Ark of the Covenant? And, you know, I'm thinking in my head, <laughs> I cannot wait to tell them about the Ark of the Covenant and just everything about it. And it's like, they're so uneducated about this, and I get to tell them about it, right? Like, for once, like, I have an area of expertise that I can share, and no one's going to tell me how to share it. So, well, no one in my crowd, most, most of the time. I have had some people. I actually got to take my family through. That was a little scary um, because they've started the sanctuary. But anyway, um, sorry, I've gone off on a rabbit trail. <laughs> and a little side note about takedown. Big Will was a really big help. And so uh, on Monday, the day we left, uh, he, he decided, I'm going to try to unbend the waiting poles, waiting tent poles, because they were like, yeah, they were like, out of whack. So he calls me over. And he's like, I need a, some help holding this pole. So Lincoln here, he's going to be Big Will. So I'm kneeling down like this, and Big Will is just holding it. And he's holding a sledgehammer, so you just kneel down over there. Oh, okay. And he's pounding this pole, and it's facing up like this, and I'm holding it like this. And next thing I know, that pole slams into my knee. And I was like, this is not good. Just pretend nothing happened. Tell Big Will everything's okay. He's like, oh, you okay? Good. Keeps on pounding. It's like, <laughs> what? My knee's dead here, and you don't care? And, like, throughout the whole day, my knee was just throbbing. Like, I could hardly put, like, much weight on it without it just, like, really hurting. But he was a really big help. On uh, what Lincoln was saying about it took a little while for him to really start giving tours. And it was impressive to see some of the students that did become full tour guides. But we were intensified in our training because we knew they had but a short period of time. And they either were going to get it or they weren't going to get it. And uh, so we had a little bit more time. I didn't, I, I'm not even sure I even gave a tour that week um, because I was, I, would, I was only going as far as the girls were going. And then, pardon? Oh, yeah, I did the very first, the VIP tour. Uh, that's right. And that, you know, then it was all just training, training, training. So there was, it was a lot more intensive on this for, the, for this mission trip. All right, one last story, I swear. Okay. <laughs> so uh, all the guys, we were, like, sitting down. I think it was, like, Tuesday or Wednesday night. We, all the guys were sitting down, um, and, and we were talking about airplanes or something, and just on the couch, and Mr. Anthony comes into the room, and he's like, did y'all, well, something on the lines of, have y'all ever wanted to be a firefighter before? Yeah, he asked us, do y'all want to play firefighter tonight? Thursday. Okay, Thursday night. He came in, we were like, uh, yeah, when I was little, I used to want to do that. And he's like, all right, great. So he told us all to pile in the van, and we raced over to the sanctuary because it was stormy that night, and we had to tie the ropes up and everything. And I was like, so I guess this is firefighter thing. So um, that, 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 was, that was really interesting um, experience. Like, it was like swaying back and forth, um, if I remember correctly. It has done that before. So. In Princeton, it was. Yeah, 
in Princeton, we had a pretty good storm. In Princeton, we had a pretty good storm that was over the summer. And you could see the wallboards. Instead of being straight out there, or something like that. Not quite that, but almost. Yeah, so <laughs> after takedown, we actually, um, we were staying in some Airbnbs, so we had to leave and take all of our stuff with us when we went to finish takedown. So we left from the church and to come back here. And we'd only been driving for about, I want to say 45 minutes. Is Mrs. Liney still here? It was like 45 minutes, right? Yeah, it wasn't very long. Um, and I was talking to Susanna, and all of a sudden, <laughs> it was like we felt something happen to the car, and we weren't really sure what had happened to it, but we knew something had gone wrong. So Mrs. Liney ever pulls over, right? And we're like, maybe we should check the tires, because that felt a little weird. So we all piled out of the car, and we're looking at this tire, and we're like, okay, it was definitely the tire. <laughs> because... Ta-da! That's what it looked like. And we were like, okay, we don't know what happened to it, but that's not good. So uh, thankfully, Mr. Anthony wasn't very far away, and we were able to call him, and he came, and he brought all these little munchkies over here. And they, uh, they helped us um, fix the tire. But okay, so, okay, I'm going to rewind. So all throughout this entire exhibit, we were having a lot of different um, problems. The devil was really, really working to try and get rid of this exhibit. Like the first night we have no power, um, no electricity, it's really windy, it's storming. Um, actually our canopy for the waiting area collapsed and was damaged and ruined, couldn't use it. Um, and then just a bunch of stuff. And then it was like, so we get through the exhibit and then on the way home he tried one more time. Oh yeah, okay, so the night before, <laughs> this poor truck, the night before, 12.30, I am sitting in bed. I don't know why I was still awake. I was just, <laughs> actually, I do know why I was still awake because I don't sleep anyway. Um, so I was sitting there in bed, like, really bored because she was asleep and I didn't want to talk to a sleeping person. So I was, like, <laughs> just sitting there. And all of a sudden, I hear this uh, noise outside my window. And I'm like, I'm like, what is this? I thought that, like, the, uh, at first I thought the air conditioning unit had turned on, but I was like, that sounds, like, way different. Like, this doesn't sound like an air conditioning unit. So I, like, walked out of the room and was like, okay, I still hear it out here. It's kind of loud over here. It's not loud over here. And so I opened the window, and I was like, that sounds like the truck. <laughs> so I closed the window, and I go out, and now Angela's standing there, and she's like, what's that noise? <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> I was like, um, I think it's a truck. So Mrs. Liney Weber's out there. Georgie was up, and she was a little bit more awake than her. She was like, I think it's the truck, too. So Mrs. Liney Weber is like, Alyssa, grab a flashlight. And I was like, OK, why? She's like, we're going to go look at the truck. And I was like, oh, great, because it's like 1230 in the, in the morning anyway. So I went and got a flashlight and some shoes, and we go outside, and we open the hood, and it's definitely the truck. Um, it was very loud. Like, we were kind of afraid that the neighbors were going to wake up and come out and scream at us. Thankfully, they didn't. They were asleep, thankfully. Anyway, so she was able to call Corey and um, ask him, uh, do you hear this? And he's like, yeah. And she's like, how do we fix this? And so he, uh, she was telling, or he was telling her, uh, do this and this and this. And I had the flashlight. So she's like, do this. And I kind of move stuff around. And finally, we unplugged some cord in the front of it anyway. It was the horn. It was jammed. Um, and uh, yeah, so it was going off in the middle of the night. I don't know if you've heard that that truck's horn, but it's not. It doesn't sound right. So it's um, it's this really annoying high pitched squeakiness. And yeah, that's what was going on for like an hour. Anyway, so we got that fixed, and the very next day that happened. But thankfully, um, the Lord is good. He helped us get out of both of those situations without any wrecks or anything else. So yeah, now, yes. So we did have quite a problem getting the spare tire down, and thanks to Micah, he was able to get it out. Thank you, Micah. When uh, everybody, I was supposed to leave before everybody else did with the semi, and I got delayed, and uh, so here they are. They had left 30, 40 minutes before I did, and now all of a sudden, I'm driving down the, the highway. I see a, a vehicle off on the side of the road. I move over a, a lane, and then as I'm going by, I realize, whoa, wait a minute, that's, that's the crew. <laughs> and so I you know, swung back over and got off on the side there and, 
and was able to help also a little bit to, uh, to get the tire changed and figure out what's going on next. Yes, uh, I forgot about that. Um, I had a premonition that uh, there was going to be a problem on the way home. And uh, fortunately, it was not any worse than just having a blown tire. Uh, that tire actually had gone low earlier in the week, and we had aired it up. Uh, you know, it looks like we should have done more than just air it up, right? Sometimes when, it, when, they're, when they're low, they're low for a reason. A side note on noise. Mike and I had to do a repeat. You were speaking the next morning, and I was puking. Oh, extra loud breathing. Sounded like an asthma attack. <laughs> but you were snoring, dude. He puked like a chicken. Okay. <clears throat> yes, so the conclusion. I got stuck with that. <clears throat> Um, overall, we had a really, really, really um, good experience, a fun week. Um, and I saw a lot of people, especially Susanna, get really excited while they were learning the tour, which was exciting to me because there was a lot of things. Like, even when I was learning the tour, I remember being like her. I'd find something out and I'd be super excited. But it was really exciting to see other people do that because, I mean, it's, it's exciting when it's you getting excited. But it's more exciting when somebody else is getting excited about what you're excited about, if that makes sense. Yeah? Okay, awesome. Um, so it was really fun to see that. Um, and yes, as a conclusion, if you guys ever get a chance to become a tour guide for, Mas for Messiah's Mansion, I highly, highly suggest it because there, I mean, a lot of people think that they know about the sanctuary, but you don't know about the sanctuary until you really sit down and study it. And then there's so many cool things you'll learn, so many different things that you never knew before. Like, you're like, oh, yeah. That altar was an altar, but it didn't represent anything. Oh, yes, it did. But you're not going to know that until you sit down and study it. And when you become a tour guide from a size mansion, you really get to sit down and study it. Also, we need, um, <laughs> I was told also that this is supposed to be like recruiting for the summer. So yeah, if you guys need a summer job, we're looking for tour guides. So yes, I highly suggest looking into that. We have about 10 exhibits. There's a couple open spots, but there are 10 exhibits that we need help, like, a lot. <laughs> and full tour guides from the past are always welcome to come back. <coughs> Cameron. <laughs> uh, Chandler has special permission not to be a tour guide anyway. So, yes, um, we are... We're going to be spending um, time at GYC to recruit, so we're going to have outside help, hopefully. But we're, I'm believing we are opening up the summer, summer program. It's not just for those who are excited about sanctuary or who's been on a sanctuary trip or who's been a full tour guide. We're opening up to anyone who wants to at least spread the word of God and to be a part of helping him come sooner. So if you guys are interested... I mean, yeah, a lot of you do canvassing. It's not that much different, actually. You're not spending about at least 12 hours a day, though. You're only spending one to seven doing an hour, 15-minute talk. It's not that hard. Trust me. It's not. You won't. Yeah, you really won't regret it. Um, and with that, I know it's getting really late. So we're going to pray. So if you guys will kneel with me, we can say a quick word of prayer to close out this Vespers or whatever you call it. Okay, let's pray. Um, <clears throat> dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for um, this evening and that we could all come together um, and talk about the sanctuary and the trip we took. And please help what people have heard to um, bless them in some way. And um, if there's anybody in this room who's been thinking about becoming a tour guide but wasn't sure, um, whether or not they should do that. Um, please help them to make up their mind and be with us all as we go throughout the rest of our week. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.